statute of limitations has run out, so I can tell this story. When I transferred from University of Cincinnati, I went to a small school down in South Carolina that had a blast. And a lot of people just think beach and pretty Charleston, man. There's some country around there. And I just so happened to live with one of the craziest, wildest, backwoods-ass rednecks I ever met, Lance Miller. That boy was wild. Crazy, redneck. We was always getting into something. We wasn't afraid to go out at night, throw the boat in, and just do dumb stuff. I got real, real hammered one night. We had a final the next morning. Ain't no way I can get up and make this test in the morning. So I went to my computer, and I printed up a nice little piece of paper that said, Professor Max, law exam is canceled today. We will retake on Wednesday. So I went up to the school. Pasted it on Professor Mac's window. We sat back in the truck. We had the boat loaded up, ready to go already. We in the truck for a couple hours trying to catch some Z's. Sun comes up. About 8 o'clock, Professor Mac walks up to the window and sees this sign. Maybe he thought it was from the university. Maybe he thought they had a faculty meeting, something. I don't know, but he ripped the sign off, locked the door and left. I was like, bro. Bro. We just canceled a test. Let's go. So we went and go pick up some more liquor. We get out on the Cooper River. We start seeing gators. You know, some good seven, eight footers. Too big to really molest. You know, not like stick your finger in a gator butt, but you know how it says, do not molest the gators. I never understood that. I know some crazy people out there. But I ain't never seen anybody stick their pecker in a gator mouth. We decided we was going to molest an alligator, but we wanted a three or four footer. Found a three or four footer in the Cooper River. Snag him, ba -ba -ba -bam. bring him to the boat, catch him, take the mouth up, we take him back to the house. We didn't really know why we were gonna take him to the house. He was too small to clean out. We just wanted a pet alligator. We just wanted a pet alligator. So on the way home, we made a detour. We stopped at Walmart, got us a little kiddie pool. Named the alligator Jay Coop. Because we caught him in the Cooper River. We had a little nose guard on the team named Jarvis. And he had a little, uh, a short alligator arms. We just called him Jay Coop. R.I.P. Jarvis. Jarvis passed, man. A good dude, funny as hell. Mind you, we were some broke, raggedy ass college kids. We got the, there was one, two, three, me, Lance, Breeding, and Lil Tight. We called him Lil Tight because he was a Lil Tight. He was the kicker. Kickers don't have names except for Kicker or the nickname he's given. He's grown now, so we call him Clint. Well, Breeding, he had an afraidophobia of alligators, just like I do tree frogs, which I know don't make no sense. Like, wipe before you poop. Just don't make sense. I walk knee deep through a swamp at night, knock a moccasin out the way, and grab an alligator. But I see a bunch of tree frogs, I turn fruity on you. <laughs> Can't do it. Braden comes home, he opens up the door, and his big ass sees Jay Coop, and he freezes. And he looks at us, and he walks out. Braden came back from his truck and unloaded an entire clip of his 9 millimeter. Clack, 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 clack. Didn't hit him not once. You know what Jay Coop did? Just sat there laughing. He would just post up in the living room and just sit with his mouth open so nobody came around him. Just let us know, don't walk down the hallway unless you flip me some bread or flip me a little bit of fish. This house, it was only three bedrooms. There was four of us. So I lived on the porch. In the winters, it was cold. Space heaters all around the bed, breathing in fumes. It's probably what's wrong with my ass now. But I just slept on the porch. Throw him in the kiddie pool. He's living in my bedroom. We would just go out in ponds and catch brim and just feed this gator every day. And every now and then, we put him on a leash and we walk him through the locker room. See, there ain't nothing funnier. Than seeing a bunch of six, five, 250 pounds. Stare, not steroid. Test not testosterone. Just me jacked up football players in a locker room butt naked ah, ah, screaming when an alligator comes at him this little gator ain't gonna do nothing man that was our little pet we walked him on a leash and everything about a week goes by and everybody knows that see even the dog knows that police not. We open up the door, it ain't the police. It's more powerful than the police. It is the fishing game. Mind you, CSU's not a big place. We're kind of like a big old high school, so everybody knew everybody. I was kind of a big deal because I transferred in from a big Division One school, you know, this, that, and other. I'm just saying. I ain't bragging. I'm just spitting facts. You know how they do. No cap. Open the door and ward the game warden standing there, and he says, Mr. McCool. Wait, how the hell does everybody know my name? We don't even hardly get covered in a newspaper. Our school's so small. He said, listen, alleged. If somebody were in illegal possession of a protected reptile, they should probably get rid of it. And jail time that they could do would really affect said person. We are like, we don't know what you're talking about. Hey, we don't know what you're talking about. I'll be back in three days. We panicked, man. Like, Jay Coop, he became part of our family. He meant something to us. We didn't just want to turn him loose in the wild. We wanted him to go somewhere that everybody could see him and he could show off. He had personality. He had personality. That night, we started brainstorming. We 
We've been drinking. Cooper River's a good 25 minute ride. We can't go that far. The campus is only a half a mile away. We actually fed him a bass that night instead of Brim because we knew it was his final meal with us. So we wanted to hook him up a little bit. So we feed Jay Coop some bass. Cut it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's happier than a warden in a female prison with a fist full of pardons. This gator is happy. So we load old Jay Coop up and we head to campus. You are campus is a horseshoe. Two buildings here, big building right here. Beep, beep. Horseshoe. Right in the middle of said horseshoe is the campus swimming pool. Surrounded by a big six foot fence. And we give Jay Coop the old one, two, Greg Lugatus. He dives into the pool and he just starts swimming Michael Phelps ass laps back and forth. He was happy. Jay Coop found him a good home. 7.45 in the morning, we pull on the campus to go to breakfast and there's this gang of people just standing around this swimming pool. We get over to the pool, sure enough. Jay Coop's in there just doing backstrokes and shit, breaststroke. He's just showing off for everybody. He's like, I got my own pool. I ain't out here in the river dodging all these other gators and these gator hunters. They get Jay Coop out of the pool. Jay Coop gets released into the wild. I don't know where he's at now, but I guarantee he's about 13 foot 6 inches by now because that was 25 years ago. Jay Coop was our boy. All I can say is Jay Coop had a hell of a life. Front page of the Charleston newspaper Monday. Had a nice big article. We don't even hardly get covered in the newspaper. Our school's so small. 